It's not often that a trip to the cinema has rendered me speechless, let alone speechless for the hour duration of my journey home. There's something refreshingly unexpected about The Last Jedi that sets it apart from expectation, or at least mine, explosively striding down unbeknown pathways of methodical endeavour, but still with a tinge of that formulaic nostalgia the franchise is famous for. To contextualise that idea for you, there were multiple moments in which my inner fanboy cried out for the likes of returning character moments and resonant icons like Luke's green lightsaber clashing with the pulsating Sith Red, but each and every time these thoughts were toppled almost disparagingly with an unexpected but satisfying twist away from convention. Every character, both intriguing new and beloved old, was layered with emotion and charisma from Rose and her familial complexities to Hux and his conflicted loyalties, there was a raw connection to each and every decision made on screen. Never before have we been so in tune with the conflict from both standpoints. Watching the action unfold from the cockpit of Poe's X-Wing as well as the bridge of Snoke's supremacy, and watching the conflict in itself has never been so mind-blowing, with an opening scene amongst the most explosive in franchise history, paired with breathtaking planets like Krayt that rival even the beauty and bewilderment of Rogue One Scarif and Return of the Jedi's Yavin 4. Captivating bewilderment also transcends through the cast too, whom all deliver cohesive, impactful and emotive performances that fundamentally shape the bedrock of this penultimate adventure. Newcomers Dern, Del Toro and Kelly Marie Tran each added a new lick of paint to the glorious lineup, whilst equally Hamill, Fisher, Ridley and Boyega innovated upon their notorious roles in The Force Awakens. Most memorably, Adam Driver's Kylo Ren was particularly outstanding, and whilst in The Force Awakens the removal of his mask marked a severe loss of intimidation, in The Last Jedi it serves as a liberation for his haunted and plagued character, soaring away from the raging apprentice and finding his feet hot on the heels of a resistance on the brink of extinction. Whilst The Last Jedi isn't so fruitful with the fan service as The Force Awakens, serving as the second instalment in the rebooted trilogy, I didn't feel it needed to be. Lovable spherical droid BB-8 returns to inject his humorous personality across the nearly two and a half hour runtime, and he's aided in the mission by the equally lovable Penguin-esque Porgs, natives of the Skellig Michael and instant additions to the Falcon family funnily slotting in beside Chewie in the notorious cockpit. That's not to say The Last Jedi was a perfect film either though, but its flaws were simply minimal in the grand scheme of things. The film's narrative had the power to destroy everything you know and love about Star Wars, from key characters to icons like the Millennium Falcon and Luke's blue lightsaber, and Johnson clearly intended you to feel this risk at multiple moments across the film. Whilst it certainly had a fair share of character deaths, it rejuvenated hope in our main protagonists, the characters of the new trilogy and the ones we're growing to know and love. Other minor issues I had with the film would be that it was, had a slightly elongated section with Finn and Rose in the gambling city of Canto Bight, seemingly lingering on when I was eagerly anticipating a return to the main action. Then secondly, a climactic moment in Snoke's throne room, which just wasn't given enough impact and attention in my opinion. In conclusion then, this film is undoubtedly brilliant, but a surprisingly different brilliant to that of Abrams' The Force Awakens. Where I expected it to shine in the nostalgic love of Hamill's Luke Skywalker specifically, it remarkably strayed, tossing the formulaic approach of previous instalments off the cliff edge just as Luke does with his iconic lightsaber. Hamill's portrayal of Luke in The Last Jedi is one of bitterness and regret, proving to be a welcome and complex distinction from the Jedi Master we might have anticipated. This breach of convention even went as far to question the core mechanics of the franchise itself, the light, the dark and the force. At one point in particular you're left with the feeling that perhaps when you leave the auditorium all these aspects might lie in ruin. But Johnson's careful to never take it that far masterfully taking you only to the brink of chaos to innovatively lend you the parts of the franchise you know and love. 
masterfully interwinding a renewed narrative that at first doesn't feel Star Wars, but ultimately is just a more complicated, bridging envision of the themes we brought into nearly five decades ago. As neither a love letter nor a rehash, The Last Jedi marks a bridge toward an exciting new Star Wars, blurring the previously omnipresent lines between light and dark, and instead providing a thrilling, nostalgic and rewardingly complex narrative that will stand the test of time and rightfully go down in history as not just one of the greatest Star Wars films ever, but one of the greatest films ever. I have nothing more but praise for this film and will still be contemplating its wonderment for years to come, I should imagine. But what were your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more critiques on everything Star Wars and more over the coming months. Thank you.